Get this base plate back on the camera. Normally I get three screws in at this end and then fit the film advance lever so it will hold the tension on that film advance. So I want my film advance lever next. So the film advance lever, that can go in place now. It's held in place by three screws, but while you're working on the camera, two screws are sufficient to uh, keep it correctly located. Now I've checked that the film advance swings smoothly. That's good. That's very good. At the top of the camera. Well our chrome trim can go on there now I think. Let's check I've got those two screws done up tight at the top. That's fine. And the shutter cocking rack. Zoom me out a bit, you can see a bit more then. The shutter cocking rack goes in. Make sure I put the new one in, not the rubbish one. That looks fine. Just check the play here and make sure it looks like it's firm. That looks okay. The clamp down plate for that is here. We have one nickel plated screw goes there. And then there's the post that guides the film release button. That serves as the other screw to hold this plate down. Let's run that down. And check the action of the film advance again. Make sure that that rack moves smoothly. It's not stiff. That seems just spot on to me, that seems very good. So the plate at this end, two screws. Sometimes it's necessary to put a shim washer under either of these clamp down plates so that everything will run smoothly. Not always, by any means, sometimes. Sometimes you need uh, different washers in different positions. Now that moves and uh, returns smoothly, that's good. There's no problem with that. Let's have a look at the, that rack. It seems to be fine there, that's good. Okay, well I can see if it will cock the shutter I suppose if I fit the shutter to the camera. So I'm removing the retaining ring from the back of the shutter. Lower this in position. Check that it's 
properly engaged with the mount and I can tell that it wasn't advanced quite far enough so I can lift it and move this curved rack forward one or more teeth let's try one try again yeah that should be good I heard that shutter fall under line Not quite, eh? One more two. That's it. That's correctly timed. So holding those two together so it doesn't fall out of place. Turn the camera over, open the back, put the shutter retaining ring in place. Find the tool to tighten it up. Run that up finger tight. Check again. That seems fine. Right, so I'll do that up tight. That's good. So far so good. I think I can uh, put the strap lug on at this end and um, then put the front door on. The strap lug's just held in place with two screws. Let's get this in position. Now normally I find that if you leave the screws loose, push the bracket outwards as far as it will go, in other words against the head of the screws, then do the screws up tight, that tends to be the correct place for that to be placed. Now the door. Okay, let's get this door in place. It's a race against time here as the battery goes flat in this video camera and the other one is not finished charging. That's life as we know it. Now, before I put that on, I want to get the return spring on that shutter release. So let me find that. Just close that front up so nothing falls out of place. Bit of molybdenum paste on the shutter release shaft itself. Again, very little is required. The spring, get that in position. That's good. Just put my uh, rubber band back on there to hold that in position so it doesn't fall out. Right, let's extend the front. Get the door in position. Yeah, we wanted a washer at the top. Line up that hinge screw hole. Get the hinge pin screwed in place. The bottom, same thing again. At the bottom of the camera, the same thing. The video camera did indeed stop running. I can't say I wasn't warned.
Right, let's check that opens and closes. No undue rattles. That's good, that door works very well indeed. At the top of the camera, I think fitting the rangefinder next would be a handy thing to do. The rangefinder is all clean and ready to go. I'll put a tiny smear of molybdenum paste on the cam surface where it engages with the post from the top of the focus mechanism. Four small dots of lacquer. which will effectively help lock this thing in place so that even if the camera is dropped hopefully the rangefinder won't shift and lose its adjustment we're inclined to do exactly that just run one screw in lightly drop the other one into place Do that up tight. Do the other one up tight, and then check. See the adjust. See what the adjustments like. Doesn't quite come to together at infinity. I'll check to see with the door closed how that changes. That's fine. So it's the adjustment that's slightly out. Slacken off the lock. Move that screw very slightly. Nearly but not quite. Let's move it a little bit more. A little bit more again. Oh yeah, that just moved in. I could see the, the paint shift. That's spot on. But my vertical adjustment is very slightly off. The moving image is slightly high. So I'll screw down the screw at the back slightly. That's good for height. But I need to come back a bit with my horizontal adjustment more okay Pretty good. Pack the other way very slightly. Sorry you can't see any of this good action, but I'm... it's essential. It's all done by looking out the window at an infinity target. And making adjustments accordingly. Well, I'm nearly ready to close this up now, so what do we want? Well, we want the film release button. So I was quick wipe of molybdenum paste in the center of that. That goes on there. Our shutter release button goes on here. I'll put a last dab of grease on there. The exposure meter. Yeah, that looks a bit grey looking. I'm going to see if I can clean that a bit. It almost looks like that plastic's degraded. Well, it'd be nice to say that looked a million dollars, but I don't really think it does. It's certainly a vast improvement. Let's try the top cover. 
I probably have to adjust the frame counter. We'll see how we go. Got a piece of uh, rubber under the top cover here to hold the meter down in place. And it's just sticking up a bit proud there. I might have to trim that off. Let's see if I can get that trimmed off. That's pretty good. Right, the frame counter. Watching the way it advances that frame number. Doesn't quite reach. Needs to be adjusted a bit further out. That should be fine. Try that. See if I can trim that rubber back a little bit from where it is at the moment. I'll be back. What have we got now? Oh, nearly. Nearly. Just a slight adjustment to make. Yeah, that's good that's spot on so I'll get these screws in the top cover get rid of that piece of rubber there let's just check that the finder and everything's clear and I'll get these screws in the top cover all right screws for the top cover we've got two chrome screws at the end here Checking that that cover's correctly pushed down into place. And one chrome screw at the end of the top cover. You're going to focus. I don't even see if I care. That goes nicely. The rewind knob. That's the rewind knob. So the meter dial, meter knob at the top. Better get that done. So the meter dial. It goes on there like that. The wavy washer. I've applied a little smear of grease to goes on there like that. Here we have the film speed scale. Then in this case there's a small plane washer. Then there's our pointer. I'll get back over you. No, it's trying to get away. Is that not sitting down correctly? Something's not sitting correctly here. Is it that spring? That wavy washer.
a smaller wavy washer which I will just give a very brief wipe of grease to and then we want the screw well of course the screw that came out of there is the ugliest looking one I've ever seen completely lost all its crumb So we'll go mad and put another one on there instead. Alright, let's get that dial something here. Yeah, that's probably a good place to start. And I will check this on my calibrated light source and set that meter so it reads correctly for bright light. And I'll check and find out if it's any good at other light levels. It may well be that the meter is, um, has an exhausted selenium cell, which is quite common these days. In which case you will not make it work accurately across the whole light range back shortly. Well that's actually much more accurate than I expected it to be. Not that I'd be shooting any slide film with it. Right, so the bottom of the camera. Let's remove the film advance lever, get the last screws around the base trim plate and fit the leatherette. Right, the leatherette. Hello. Some adhesive. Now this leatherette's in no prettier state than the other leatherettes were. Just making sure I've got good coverage right to the edges. Because the leatherette doesn't really want to lie flat. It's a bit curled up at the edges. If I haven't got good coverage it certainly won't lie flat. That'll do. Wipe off that excess. Fit this into place. Leatherettes tend to shrink, so they typically do not fit well round a raised boss like this need to be pressed down firmly around it that's good put my advance lever again find the third screw which we hadn't bothered to fit earlier
that's great. The leatherette patch for the advanced lever. I'll just uh, stick a bit of glue on that. This leatherette's looking a bit um, cracked and tired, but at least it's complete and it's original. And now I just need to assemble the back catch release cover. Let's get this cover together. Put the two component, main components together. Put one screw through in place. The one that the return spring runs on. Fit the return spring into position. That is exceedingly reluctant to go. That's better. That should hold itself in position hopefully while I get it over the top of that boss. That did. Run that screw down. Check that the thing returns correctly. And it does. Get its mate in position, do that up tight, check again, that's all good, all leatherette in place. And this requires a wipe of some wax to fix the leatherette on that, but the front of the camera, as you can see, and the back of the camera are quite good now. Those Zeiss bumps, those big warts that we had earlier, their history. So it was not exactly a promising uh, prospect when we started this one. It looked a bit ugly um, and it certainly didn't go. There was no danger of it going. It's looking a bit better now. And interestingly I found something else here too. This shutter cocking rack. Now I know the teeth are bugging. I'd already spotted that. They're just finished with. They're just rubbish. But what I hadn't really taken note of was that there was a crimp mark right at the tip here. Somebody's punched that and underneath, underneath you'll see multiple punch marks here. They've been driven into the metal to stretch it, to basically push the teeth outwards. And those teeth presumably would have been hand filed after that. So someone has had a go at repairing this before. They've used, they've resorted to heroic methods you might say, they should have just replaced it. Um, and either it was an abject failure at the time, or it failed shortly afterwards. But certainly Someone has taken great, they've, they've, there's one, two, there's three big punch marks in there where they've punched a screwdriver in to stretch that metal out. Um, so that rack was, after they'd done that, even if it had been bad beforehand, it probably wasn't much better when they'd finished. So that was something I really wasn't expecting to find and it was only when I turned it over that I saw that funny looking groove and wondered what the hell is that all about. Thanks for watching.